Hello, welcome, namaste. In today's video, I am analyzing Asian Paints. We will also analyze other group companies like Berger and Kensai Narolek to understand how these three companies compare against each other. On the screen, we can see that Asian Paints has different verticals even in paints. One is interior paints, exterior paints, wood finish range, metal finishes. It has basically two verticals. One is the home decor and the other is industrial paints. The company has manufacturing plants located all over India. The decorative plants are located in Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Tilangana, Vishakapatnam, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu. The chemical plants are in Tamil Nadu and industrial paint plants are in Gujarat and Maharashtra. These are the different installed capacity per annum in kiloliters. In terms of decorative coatings, this is the largest contributor to the group's revenues. This business features a comprehensive portfolio including paints, painting tools, waterproofing solutions, wall coverings and adhesives. The company has over 60,000 plus dealers which enables it to cater to a wide cross sections of customers across geographies. It has eight manufacturing plants across different locations countrywide with a combined capacity of 1.73 million kiloliters per annum of decorative paint product using the state of the art technology. The other part is the industrial coating. The company is present in the industrial coating space with high performance, high quality offerings that serves to protect surfaces through their two 50-50 joint ventures. The company delivers high value paints and coatings to industrial original equipment manufacturers. In the other joint venture, it supplies paints and coatings to customers in automotive OEMs, automotive refinishes, industrial, marine and packaging. Both the joint ventures benefits from the combined strength of both partners in ensuring technological superiority quality and durability. For industrial OEMs, the company's offers are categorized under protective coatings, powder coatings, floor coatings and road markings. The company is a market leader in thermoplastic road markings as well as in auto refinish segment and second largest player in auto OEM segment. This, let us look at the revenue that the company earned region wise in FI 2019. Asia contributed 48%, mostly coming from Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Singapore and Indonesia. Africa contributed around 20%, Egypt and Ethiopia were the main contributors. Middle East, Oman, Bahrain and UAE 26% and 6% coming from South Pacific. Let us look at the key performance indicators. These are on standalone basis. We are not considering the subsidiaries in this particular analysis and the data is of 2019. Company's revenue from operations were 16,391 crores as of March 2019 and we see an upward trend from fiscal year 15 where the overall revenues from operations were 10,911 crores. If you look at the growth over the five year, the revenues have been compounding at the rate of 10.9 percent. YOY from 18 to 19, the revenues have grown by almost 15.8 percent. In terms of EBITDA, it stood at 3,586 crores in 2019 compared to 2,197 crores. That's a CAGR growth rate over a period of five years of 13 percent. From 18 to 19, the EBITDA had increased by 12.2%. EBITDA margin or the top line operating profit margin in 19 was 21% compared to 20% in 1415. So throughout uh, the five year data that we have on the screen, the company's top line profit margin stood about 20%. Cash generated from operations has always been in the positive throughout these five years and the cash has compounded at the rate of 11.3 percent. This is the CFO that the company generates every year or cash flow from operations or operating activity. In 1819, company received 3098 crores of cash through operating activity which was 1732 crores in fiscal year 15. Profit after tax in March 19 stood at 2,134 crores and the profit has been growing at 12.8% compounded over the last five years. Absolute return from 18 to 19 was 12.7%. Earnings per share after adjusting for exceptional items was 22.26 rupees per share and we see an CAGR growth rate in EPS of around 12.8%. Earlier in FY15, 
company's profits per share were 13.8 rupees and has been steadily growing up to 22 rupees in FY19. From FY18 to FY19, the absolute growth was around 12.7%. Company's market capitalization as of March 2019 stood at 1,43,179 crores. This was the value of the company in the market and the market capitalization has been compounding at the rate of 22.2%, whereas from 18 to 19, it has grown by almost 32% from 1,7,000 to 1,43 in 2019. The company's net fixed asset stood at 4,670 crores in March 2019 and the asset have been compounding at the rate of 18.3 percent from 1965 crores finally let's look at the average capital employed and return on capital employed the overall capital employed in 2019 was 8,357 crores into the business and on that the company has generated around 38.3 percent of profits or EBITDA let us look at the overall expenses of the company as a percentage of total sales. The maximum expenses is in the raw material cost occupying almost 56.5% of the total revenue. Other expenses accounted for around 16.8%. Company's employee cost as a percentage of total sales stood at 5.4%. This we will also analyze in great detail when we look at the financial statement analysis. Let us look at the industry overview. The domestic paint industry is estimated to be around 50,000 crore industry with the decorative paint category constituting almost 75% of this market. The decorative paint market includes multiple categories depending on the nature of the surface like exterior wall paints, interior wall paints, wood finishes, animals as well as ancillary products like primers, putties etc. The industrial paint categories constitutes the balanced 25% of the paint market and includes a broad array of segments like automotive coatings, marine coatings, packaging coatings, powder coatings, protective coatings and other general industrial coatings. The domestic paint industry still continues to have a sizable 30 to 35 percent share of unorganized players which primarily cater to the low end of the product basket. The paint industry continues to see the emergence of small to medium level new paint players who continue to put pressure at the low end emergence. Industry trend over the second half of the previous fiscal year the paint industry had gradually returned to normalcy from the destocking effect of the GST rollout. However, the first half of 1819 was impacted by supply chain disturbances due to the GST rate reduction from 28% to 18% leading to a bit of destocking in the distribution channel. The longer festival season ensured that there was a good growth in the paint industry in the September-October period. The paint industry experienced significant raw material price inflation during the year with rising crude prices and depreciating currency and this led to a few rounds of price increases by the industry players to shore up margins. The automotive coatings market is primarily dependent on the auto and two-wheeler industry builds and the significant slowdown faced by the auto industry impacted the demand conditions for automotive coating products. Non-automotive industrial coatings market grew at a high single digit rate during the year under review. While the organized sector was a clear beneficiary of the GST implementation, creating a level playing field across market segments, demand for industrial coatings remained sluggish due to low manufacturing growth and slowdown in infrastructure and power segments. Government's focus on infrastructure development would support the industrial coatings demand. The volatility affecting critical raw materials including crude oil as well as volatility on the exchange rate will need to be critically monitored to cushion the impact on profitability. Finally, let us look at few of the ratios under the consolidated table. Debtors stood at only 10.6% of the total sales. Inventory turnover ratio on the cost of goods sold was 3.91. Interest coverage ratio has decreased from 88 times to 66 times in FI19. Current ratio is comfortable at 1.52 times. Debt to equity ratio is very low at 0.07. Slightly increased from where it was in FY18. The OPM margin stood at around 19.4% in FY19, decreasing from where it was in FY18. Net profit margin stood at 11.4% in 19, compared to 12% in FY18. The return on net worth or ROE was 24.1% in FY18-19, compared to 25.5% in 1718. So this concludes my brief analysis of Asian Paint. Next, let us move on and check out Asian Paint's company profile in detail. So let's begin with our detailed analysis of Asian Paint. Set up in 1942, 
the paint company is the largest paint manufacturer in India. About 80% of its revenue comes from decorative paints and the remaining from industrial paints and overseas operations. The group produces automotive industrial coatings under PPG Asian Paints Private Limited, a joint venture with the PPG Industries. It is also present in the home improvement and decor space in India through its wholly owned subsidiaries Sleek International for kitchens and wardrobes and SS for bath fittings. The group has an installed paint capacity of around 17.3 lakh kiloliter per annum. It has eight decorative paint plants in different locations across India. The group has an industrial paint plant in Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Sales infrastructure is strong and comprises numerous stock points and a network of dealers. Operations span India and 15 countries around the globe through subsidiaries and joint ventures. The group enjoys a dominant share of over 50% in the organized domestic paint market. This is the second largest player has a market share of about 16% only. In the decorative paint segments which comprises about 70 to 75% of the Indian paint industry, the group has a share of about almost 60%. It also has a healthy position in the automotive industrial coating segment with a market share of about 20%. Through its leadership position, the group's revenue registered a compounded annual growth rate of 11% over the last five fiscal through 2019. Strong brand equity, extensive distribution network and wide product portfolio should help the company sustain strong market position. Profitability benefits from the group's ability to command a premium because of its leadership position and also because it can partly pass on raw material price increases to its customers. Gearing has been less than 0.1 times over the past five years due to minimal dependence on debt and was 0 0.07 times as on 31st March 2019. Group had a liquid surplus of more than 1,600 crores at the end of March 31st 2019. Expected annual cash accrual of more than 1,600 crores will be more than sufficient to fund regular capital expenditure and incremental working capital requirements. While the group has the flexibility to pass on rise in prices to customers in the domestic decorative business, this is limited in the industrial paint segment. The material cost accounts for more than 55% of the total cost of sales with titanium dioxide and crude based derivatives comprising majority of the total raw material cost. Profitability in the non-decorative segment is partly susceptible to volatility in the raw material prices. The organized paint industry is dominated by a few large players. Despite this, paint manufacturers face competition from strong regional players, especially in the mass market product. While paint manufacturers have the flexibility to pass on the cost increases, their ability to absorb cost benefits and thereby increase margins is limited. Asian Paint as a group is the most cost efficient player and also the price leader. However, while the group is likely to maintain its healthy margin, increasing profitability is expected to remain restricted by competition. The group has ample liquidity driven by cash accruals of more than 1,600 crores per annum in 2020 as well as 2021 and liquid surplus of more than 1600 crores as on 31st March 2019. The company also has access to fund based working capital limits of 125 crores which are largely unutilized. The company has sufficient accruals and cash and cash equivalents to meet its fee payment obligations and finance its capex requirements and investment requirements in various subsidiaries. The downside scenarios would include any steep decline in operating margin or market share in the domestic paint industry as well as large debt funded acquisition or capex that may impact financial risk profiles. Ending with the positive points, the group will continue to benefit from its market leadership leading to sustained revenue growth and healthy operating margin over the medium term. Financial risk profile, especially the liquidity is expected to remain robust because of strong cash generation. So this concludes my detailed profile analysis of the company. Next, let us move on and check out the financial statements which would include the PL account, balance sheet, 
cash flow statement and quarterly profit and loss account analysis. Let's begin our analysis of the profit and loss account of Asian Paints. Looking at the sales growth over 5 years, last 3 years and the latest growth rate in sales, we see that from March 19 to the recent 12 months, the sales has grown from 19,342 till 20,594 crores that's a 6.4 percent of gain whereas in the last three years the revenue through sales has compounded at the rate of 10.6 percent whereas from five years back the sales has grown every year at the rate of 9.62 percent compounded even if you look at from 14 to 16 and then from 16 to march 19 we see an upward trend so this is what we should look for in all the companies that we invest in that they are sales should be growing every year consistently on the uptrend average opm for the last five years stood at around 18.54 percent whereas in the recent three years it was 18.9 percent the company's opm margin on an average basis has been above my benchmark of 15 percent in march 19 out of the total revenues of around 19,342 crores, company's operating expenses stood at around 15,812 crores. That's a OPM margin of 18.3%. Whereas the latest OPM margin stood at around 20.3%. Other income is contributing a small portion of the total sales at 1.7%. Against the total sales of 20,594 crores in the recent 12 months, the company's other income stood at 358 crores. If we see the trend in terms of percentages also, 16, 19 and the recent 12 months, it's quite flat. Depreciation as a percentage of total sales stood at 3.7% and has been steadily growing up against the value of the sales as of recent 12 months the depreciation as a percentage of total sales stood at 3.7 765 crores of depreciation was deducted out of the total revenue of 20,594 crores raw material cost as a percentage of total sales as we had earlier also seen was always above 50 percent throughout the years this is not very substantial but the lower the better but as a trend if we look at then we see that it has stood slightly between 50 and 60 percent employee cost also seems quite flat between six and seven percent throughout these years as a percentage of total sales company's interest expense as of the recent 12 months stood at 106 crores that is also a very small and insignificant percentage of the total sales company's debt status is very low as we had earlier seen in the company profile if we observe the tax rate percentage stood at around 24.2%. The company paid a total tax of around 888 crores in the recent 12 months against the total PBT or profit before tax of 3668 crores. We see an upward trend in the amount of PBT the company had been earning through these three years that we have on the screen. Percentage wise, the company's tax rate structure has reduced to slightly around 25 percent interest coverage ratio is at around 35.5 times and is above my benchmark of four times company paid an interest of around 106 crores in the recent 12 months compared to the EBIT it earned of around 3774 crores earlier in march 19 the coverage ratio stood at 59.8 times and from there it has drastically dropped to around 35.5 times the company's interest cost has increased from 56 crores to 106 crores in one year compared to the increase in EBIT from 3367 crores to 3774 crores although as a percentage of the total EBIT earned this is considerably low net profit margin over the years has been above 10 percent on the total sales as of the recent 12 months 2,715 crores of profit was earned on a total sales of 20,594 crores. That's a 13.2% of NPM. Average NPM in the recent 12 months stood at 13.2% compared to its averages of the 5 and 3 years of about 10%. Net profit growth rate in the recent 12 months given absolute growth of around 25.7% from 2,159 crores to 2,715 crores. Just like sales growth, we also want to see a high growth rate in profits over the years. So in the recent three years, 
the profits have grown by 7.4 percent CAGR whereas in the last five years it has compounded at the rate of 12.1 percent. The valuation ratio market cap to sales is at 7.3 times although even in March 19 it was somewhere around that but this is above my benchmark of six to seven times considering in March 16 it was available at a good valuation of 5.8 times that is the market cap was around 5.8 times higher than the revenue the company generated so we don't want to pay when the difference between the market cap and the revenue it is generating every year goes above six to seven times that would be a high valuation to pay for against the company's sales. Company's dividend payout ratio has always been above 40 percent throughout the years. In March 19 company paid almost 46.6 percent of its profits to the shareholders as dividend. So the dividend paid was almost 1000 crores out of the net profit of 2159 crore. Company's current price to earnings ratio is at 55 times. This is expensive compared to March 19 where it was 66 times although it has come down quite a bit but even now also this is very expensive. The company had earned around 28 rupees per share as profits in the recent 12 months and we are paying 55 times more than this profits to buy each share at 1570 rupees. So this is a high multiple. Even if you look at uh, March 16's multiple that too is very high at 47.7 times but then this would give us an understanding as to where the price earning multiple of this company is trading at over the years. We can look at the average of the last five and three years and see where the multiple stood at since last five and three years. So we see that for both five and three years the multiple has been above 55 times and the current price earning multiple is very near to its five years average. So then we can take the long term averages as our benchmark instead of selecting 25 times as a standard benchmark. We can look at its last five years average where it has been trading at and keep that as a benchmark or even we can compare the price earning with its peer group come. That would also be a good way of comparing the price earning multiple or valuation ratios of Asian Paints with its peer group. Moving on to the balance sheet analysis of Asian Paints. The equity share capital has stood at around 96 crores throughout the years with face value at 1. ROE over March 14, March 16, March 19 has stood above 20 percent throughout the years. In March 19, company's net worth or equity shareholders contribution in the business or money contributed by the owners of the company stood at around 9520 crores. This value can be accounted to the owners of the business. Against this net worth, the company had earned 2150 crores of net profit which works out to around 22.7 percent. My benchmark is that ROE percentage over the years should be above 15 percent at least. Even in March 16 and March 14 company had generated more than 25 percent of returns on the net worth. Looking at the long term averages of 7, 5 and 3 years we see that throughout the years the company's ROE percentage has been above 24. In terms of return on capital employed that is the total capital employed in the business against that how much EBIT or top line profit the company is generating we see for Asian Paint it has been more than 30 percent of ROCE. Here too my benchmark is that the companies that I invest in should generate at least 15 percent of returns on capital employed. In March 19 the company's total EBIT stood at around 10,147 crores. This is the earnings before interest and tax is deducted. In March 19 the company's total source of funding was around 10,147 crores through both borrowings as well as through shareholders or owners of the business. On that the company had generated 3367 crores of EBIT which works out to around 33.2 percent and throughout the years we see a very high profits generated on the capital employed by the business. Over the last seven five and three years also we see above 35 percent of returns generated on the capital employed by the business. So the more the return ratios or profitability ratios on the capital employed or net worth 
the more valuations the company gets in terms of price to book or price to earning on the total assets of the company that is the balance sheet size in march 19 company's total balance sheet size stood at around 15717 crores on that the company had generated a profit of around 2159 crores that's a 13.7% of returns over march 16 and 15 also the roa was above 15% Although I don't have a benchmark here, but we can cross-check it with the past data. Debt to equity was very less at less than 0.1 times. On a total equity of 9,520 crores employed into the business, the company's debt stood at 627 crores. Three years back, the total debt was around 323 crores. From there, it has almost doubled. Earlier in March 14, the total debt stood at 214. Although multiple or ratio wise this is a very low multiple compared to the equity as the equity grows into the business the amount of debt should also increase proportionately if the company has high growth and is managing to generate a good returns on the amount of capital employed which we saw earlier that the roc percentages were above 35 so this gives us confidence that even if the debt increases that would be good for the company in terms of capital expenditure requirement of the total balance sheet size equity shareholders contribution is around 61% that is 9520 crores against the total debt of 627 crores which is just 4% of the total balance sheet size price to book ratio is very high at 15.8 times currently on a total net worth of 9520 crores the company's market value is 150,556 crores that's a huge multiple that the market participants have given to this company even if we go back till 16 as well as in march 19 we see a very high multiple of 12.8 and 15 times its net worth so the company has been trading at a very high price to book ratio throughout the years and we can even look going back 5 and 7 years back and see what was the multiple that this company got in terms of market cap to net worth through these years and that would give us a good indication whether we can take this as a benchmark as to where the company has been trading as also we can compare the price book with its peer group where other companies are trading in terms of market cap to net worth total debt in the business was around 29% of march 2019's profit value So in March 2019 company had earned 2159 crores and the company's debt in March 19 stood at 627 so the company can very easily pay off this debt using the profits generated in this year itself and throughout the years although we see an increasing percentage of debt to net profit this is not very significant and the company has enough cash reserves to pay off this debt as in when a company's net assets was stood at around 37.2% of the total balance sheet size so out of the total balance sheet of around 15717 crores in march 19 the assets itself occupied around 5851 although this is substantial but it has not exceeded the 40% 32-40% benchmark that i have set for myself even if you look at throughout the years march 14 and 16 it was about 30 another thing we notice is that even if the company does increase its assets it is generating huge returns on the total net worth as well as capital employed so this gives us confidence that the company will manage its net assets very well depreciation charged uh, as a percentage of total gross block is 6.9% as of march 19 and this is the depreciation rate that was charged on the gross block so over the years we see quite a stable uh, rate uh, although it is on a decreasing trend as the amount of gross block is increasing the amount of depreciation will also increase but as a percentage it seems at a pretty reasonable level compared to the past data the capital work in progress as of march 19 was of around 210 crores this is the capex or capital expenditure that the company had undertaken as of at the end of march 2019 which is just 1.3% of the total assets or balance sheet size earlier also we have seen not a very heavy capex requirement on the total balance sheet company's cash holding was 3% as of march 
out of the total assets of 15000 crores company's cash holding was a very small portion of 445 crores and earlier also we see quite a flat percentage rate company's investments stood at 16.3% of the total balance sheet size so the investments were around 2570 crores as of march 19 even in march 16 it was at a value of around 2712 crores which was 25% so from there as the amount of assets or balance sheet size has increased the investments have remained quite flat there is a reasonable percentage rate of investments against the total balance sheet size these investments generate other income for the company debtors as a percentage of total balance sheet size debtors or customers from whom the company had to collect payment in 2019 stood at around 12.1 percent against the total balance sheet size of 15,700 crores so out of that only 1,900 crores were to be collected from the customers in 2019 we see quite a flat rate in terms of debtor percentage this is a good value it should not exceed 30 percent of the total assets even debtors turnover that is against the sales the amount pending to be collected from the customers was simply 10 percent earlier also we see a very low percentage rate to be collected from the customers against the sales of those years the company is collecting its payment within 36 days from its customers as of march 19 has remained quite flat at less than 40 days throughout these years it should not exceed more than three months or 90 days Current ratio is also comfortable at 1.3 times as of March 19. Against the total current assets of 7,000 crores, the liabilities stood at only 5,500. Throughout, we see above 1 times of current ratio. Inventory turnover stood at around 20% as of March 19. This is the amount of work that was going on in the company at the end of March 19 of around 3,150 crores. This is the amount of inventory the company had been holding in its balance sheet out of the total balance sheet size which amounts to around 20 percent earlier also we see a very flat percentage of less than 25 percent of inventory holding against the total assets we also compare the inventory with the sales so want the sales to be as high as possible so here in march 19 we see that the sales were around 6.1 times higher than the inventory at the end of march 19 and from March 16 it has slightly dropped but overall the higher the multiple the better it is as we want the company to do a multiple time sales against its inventory holding moving on to the analysis of the cash flow in March 19 against the total net profit of 2150 crores company's cash inflows through operating activity was 2200 crores which was 3% higher than the profit declared and earlier too we see higher cash inflows than the profits being declared so this is a good value to look at let's club the data in seven five and three years category so in the last three years in total the company's profits were around 6138 crores against which it received cash of 5855 crores this is a five percent shortfall although this is not a very high shortfall we want the cash inflows coming from operating activity to be more than the net profit shown by the company even through the five years and seven years the profits and the cash were very nearby to each other so this indicates that the company is receiving cash against the profit declared that is the profits are getting converted into cash every year on an average basis as well checking out the amount of cash earned through the operating activity and out of that how much was put into investing activity in march 19 41 percent of the cash earned through operations that is 2200 crores out of that 897 crores was transferred into investing activity we will look at the cash flow statement separately in detail after this in march 16 also the amount of cash invested was around 39 percent of the cash earned from operating activity i generally have a set benchmark here which is 50 percent don't want the companies to invest more than 50 percent of the cash earned through operating activity into investing part the balance 50 percent would then go into financing activity let us look at the long term trends of seven five and three years also here too we see that not more than 50 percent 
throughout the long term averages the company has transferred or put into investing activity what it earned through cash so in last 3 years 54% of the cash earned from operations of 5800 crores was put into investing activity now this investing activity would include buying and selling of fixed assets buying and selling of all investments including investments in mutual funds shares etc and over the long term trend of 7 and 5 years also we see that not more than 50% was put into investing activity so this is a good value before looking at the cash profit margin percentage let us analyze the cash flow statement separately as that would give us a lot more information than just the pnl account before we begin with the cash flow statement analysis a disclaimer is necessary the information contained in this video is not intended or shall not be understood as financial advice. I have done my best to ensure that the information provided in this video are accurate and the data is extracted from reliable sources. This is an educational video and I have done my best to provide valuable information for the investors who can then make their own decision. Regardless of anything, nothing available on or through this video should be understood as a recommendation or advice. Having said that, let's start with our cash flow statement analysis. This is the consolidated cash flow statement ending 31st March 2019. All values are in crores. We begin by looking at the profit before tax figures and from there we deduct or add depending on whether it is a non-cash expenditure or a non-operating income. Depending on that, we'll add or deduct. So, if it is a non-cash expense then it gets added back and if it's a non-operating income it will be removed out so first we have to do all the adjustments in the profit before tax value so beginning with the 2019 values the profit before tax stood at around 3310 crores out of that 430 crores of depreciation expenses were added back into it because this is a non-cash expense meaning nothing in terms of cash is going out of the business so this gets added back into the pbt to arrive at the cash flow from operating activities i'll read out the major items since the gain on sale of property plant and equipment is a non-operating income or gain that will need to be removed out so 14 crores are removed out finance cost which is a non-operating expense gets added back of 51 crores Allowance for doubtful debts and advances is a non-cash item and therefore gets added back into the PBT. All the bad debts which is written off is also a non-cash expenses and therefore will be added back. Interest income is a non-operating income and therefore will need to be removed out. Dividend income is also of similar nature and therefore will have to be removed out. Company received the share of profit from its associates of around 40 crores and since this is a non-operating income or profits this will have to be removed out net gain of around 52 crores is removed out on financial assets which the company received thus we have the operating profit before working capital changes are adjusted amounting to around 3623 crores in the earlier year of fiscal year 18 the company had received operating cash flows of around 3273 crores Moving on, we will need to adjust for all the working capital changes. Since there is an increase in inventory amounting to 491 crores, that is, company had increased its inventories and therefore had paid cash for these inventories and therefore 491 crores went out of the business. Company's trade and other receivables also increased. The company has not received this money out of the sales and therefore 223 crores needs to be deducted out of the profit before tax since this is the value it did not receive although it showed this value in the amount of revenue generated through sales company has not paid 287 crores in terms of purchases it did and which it showed in the profit and loss account as payment done for purchases or expenses done for purchases of raw material and therefore 287 crores gets added back this amount was not paid to the suppliers or we can even say that this is a credit purchase 
Finally, we have the cash generated from the operating activity of around 3196 crores against 3194 in the previous year. The company paid an income tax of around 982 crores in March 2019 and thus had 2214 crores of cash inflows from operating activity against 2113 crores in 2018. Moving on further, We'll look at the cash flows from investing activity. In March 2019, Asian Paints purchased an additional property, plant and equipment of around 1,150 crores and the cash went out of the company. In its previous years, it had spent 1,425 crores on purchase of PPE, that is property, plant and equipment. The other major expenses was the purchase of non-current investments amounting to around 572 crores and at the same time, it did sell non-current investments of 363 crores. These are the investments it does to generate other income. So 363 crores of investment sold and 572 crores purchased in 2019. Company also did sale of current investments amounting to around 369 crores. So the current investments are basically those investments which is less than one year duration and non-current are more than one year duration investments. Company also received interest of around 39 crores and dividend of around 39 crores. So earlier uh, in the operating cash flow, we deducted this 40 crores of interest and dividend of 40 crores and that gets shifted into the investing activity. So all entries are put into their respective categories properly and thus net cash used in investing activity amounted to around 923 crores. In the earlier year 1599 crores were used in the investing activity. The major of that was payment for acquisition of subsidiary of 524 crores and 1425 crores used in the purchase of property plant and equipment. Moving on further, we'll look at the cash flows from financing activities. Company had repaid some of its non-current borrowings of around 25 crores and also received around 14 crores from new non-current borrowings. Through current borrowings, the company received around 74 crores and through acceptances, around 153 crores. A major portion of the financing activity went into dividend and dividend tax of around 1048 crores uh, in the earlier year also company paid around 1200 crores as dividend thus 882 crores went out of the financing activity when compared to 1379 crores in the earlier year finally at the end of the year the company's cash and cash equivalent holdings were 1279 crores against 845 in 2018 next let's check out the remaining ratios in the financial statements continuing with the cash profit margin against the sales how much operating cash flow the company earned in march 19 out of the total revenue of 19342 crores the company's operating cash flows stood at around 2200 crores which is around 11.4 percent and throughout we see that the company had been earning about 10% of cash profit margin. This is similar to the net profit margin except instead of net profit we use the operating cash flow as the denominator and therefore we are just trying to understand whether the company's profits and cash flows are above 10% margin. Let us look at how the prices have changed over the last three years, five years and seven years. From March 16 to the current market price of 1,569 rupees per share, the company's prices have compounded over 21.8% every year. From 868 rupees in March 16 to the current market price, the absolute return over a period of three years was 80.7%. Moving on to the 5 years growth rate in price from 14 to the current market price that also has compounded the money at 23.4% every year and an absolute return of around 186.4%. This is the total increase in price that one could have expected had someone invested in March 2014. Whereas from 7 years back, the prices have almost more than tripled. So anyone invested in March 12 would have seen the price multiplying by more than 3.8 times on an absolute basis or 384 percent and compounded over 25 percent every year from march 12 to the current market price 
So on a long term, if we see wherever, even if you had invested seven years back in March 12 or March 14 or March 16, from all these places, the prices have kept on compounding at more than 20% every year. So if the similar trend continues, another three years later, we can expect the prices to compound at the rate of almost more than 20%. If historically, if we go by these numbers. Finally, let's recap the valuation ratios. Price to earnings, as we saw, was very expensive at 55 times. All these are the latest ratios. Price to cash is 68 times, even higher than price to earnings, which indicates that the company's cash inflows are less than its earnings or profits declared. Price to book is also expensive at 15.8 times. Here, my benchmark is generally set at 2.5 times. Market cap to sales is also expensive at 7.8 times. Generally, in any company where we see high return on capital employed, high return on equity, valuation wise, the company would be trading at a premium. Thus, we see that Asian Paints is trading at high premium. Checking out the quarterly profit and loss account, sales has grown both in positive territory yoy as well as quarter on quarter so in december 18 the total sales were 5263 crores which increased to 5420 crores in december 19 even from september 19 to december 19 that is sequentially it has grown by 7.3 percent profit wise yoy it has gone up by almost 20 percent from 636 crores in december 18 to 764 crores in december 19 whereas Sequentially, the profits have declined from 823 to 764 crores by almost 7.2%. Net profit margin throughout the three quarter data that we have have been above 10%, which is my benchmark. In December 19, on a total sales of 5,420 crores, company's net profit stood at 764 crores, slightly lower than the September 19 net profit value and a 14.1% of net profit margin. So this concludes my detailed analysis of the financial statements of Asian Paints. Next, let us check out the peer group analysis. Moving on to the peer group analysis, I'm comparing Asian Paints with Berger Paints and Kansai Narolek. The current market price of Asian Paints is 1,523 rupees per share. Berger Paints at 457 and Kansai Narolek at 360. The highest fall in terms of 52 week drop in price was seen for Kansai Narolek at around 37%. Berger Paints has fallen by around 23% from its highest 52 week price point and Asian Paints has seen a fall of around 20.5%. Results for Berger and Asian Paints is up to date till December 2019 and Kansai Narolek is up to date till March 2020. So we have to look at Kansai Narolek in that sense for the quarterly data. Kansai Narolek has seen around 11.6% drop from March 2019 to March 2020. Since the data is up to date till March 2020, the company has seen around 11.6% drop in its total revenue. Berger Paints data is up to date till December 2019 and has seen from December 18 to December 19 around 4.9% increase in its sales. Asian Paints too has seen a growth of around 3%. Both for Asian Paints and Berger Paints, the latest quarterly data needs to be looked at separately. In terms of profits, Kansai has seen a 22% drop in its profits YOY, whereas Berger and Asian Paint has seen around 20 and 36% growth rate in their profits. Comparing the sales of the recent 12 months with uh, the sales of 2019, the bottom value is of 2019 and the upper value is of the recent 12 months. Asian Paints sales or revenue has gone up from 19,300 crores to 20,500. Berger Paints revenues have also gone up from 6,000 to 6,400 crores. Kensai Narolex sales has dropped from 5,400 to 5,280 crores in the recent 12 months. In terms of profits of the recent 12 months, when compared with the values of 2019, Asian Paints profits have gone up to 2,700 crores from 2,150 earned in 2019. Berger Paints profits have also gone up from 490 to 664. And Kensai Narolex overall one year profit in the recent 12 months has gone up to 521 from 438. So although there was a slight drop in the sales in Kensai Narolex, profit has increased from 2019. Comparing the profit after tax of 2019 with the cash flow from operations of 2019 to understand how much of the profit actually got converted into cash. 
Asian Paints had shown a profit of 2150 and received a cash of 2200 crores. So cash is slightly more than the profits. Similar is the situation for Berger Paints showing a profit of 490 and cash coming in of 562 crores. So these are both good values. Kensai Nerolex cash inflows are lower than the profits declared of 438 crores. Therefore this if someone is interested in investing in narrow lag, then they need to look at the cash flow statement separately to understand why the company's cash flow from operations is showing a shortfall against the profit declared. Comparing the valuation ratio price to earning, all the three companies are trading at a high price earning multiple. Kensai narrow lag is trading at the lowest at 37 times its earnings compared to Berger at 66 times the highest in the group, followed by Asian Paints at 53.8 times. Since all the three companies are trading at a high multiple, we can take the average of these three companies which works out to around 52 times and therefore anything below 52 should be considered a good price earning multiple or we can take an average of more companies to come to a better value or we can say that we can also use the industry wide price earning data which we'll have to calculate separately. Or we can also use this price earning against its averages. So Asian Paints last 5 years price earning average was around 52.7 times. So it is slightly above that 5 years price earning average. Berger Paints price earning multiple is way ahead of its 5 years average of 49.6. Kensa is trading below its 5 years average of 40.1 times. Although all these multiples are high and above my benchmark. In terms of market cap to the operating cash flow. All these companies are trading at a very high multiple. Again, since we earlier saw that the company had received only 100 crores of cash against the profit declared and therefore we see in the market cap to OCF also, the multiple is very high at 194 times. That is the market cap of the company or the total value of the company the market was around 194 times higher than the cash earned in 2019 which is an extreme high valuation. I don't like to buy into companies which have a very low cash coming in through operating activities. If you observe good companies or good fundamental companies, you will always see that their cash and profits are very nearby to each other. Berger Paints price to OCF is also expensive at 79.1 times. So in this case, the most reasonable seems Asian Paint at 66 times the lowest in three. Even price earning multiple was at 53.8 lower than Berger. In terms of price to book or market cap to net worth, Kensa is available at the lowest multiple of 5.2 times, followed by Asian Paints at 14.5 and Berger at around 18.1. Looking at how expensive the market price is compared to the sales done by the company in 2019, Asian Paints is quoting at 7.1 times higher than the sales it generated. Berger Paints market cap is 6.9 times higher. Whereas Kensai Narolek is quoting at a reasonable multiple of 3.7. Again, we can either take an average of these three to understand what would be a good market cap to sales multiple. In terms of enterprise value to EBITDA, all these three companies are trading at a very high multiple to its EBITDA. Enterprise value is different from the market cap or market capitalization in the sense that enterprise value is calculated by taking the market capitalization, adding all the debt that the company has, long term as well as short term debt and out of that total we deduct the cash holding of the company and thus get the enterprise value. And against that enterprise value, what is the EBITDA the company is earning? This is the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation and amortization. So we are trying to understand against the EBITDA how far away is the enterprise value of the company. Asian Paints is quoting at 32 times more than the EBITDA of 2019. Berger Paints at 39.2 times its EBITDA and Kensai Narolek at 23.5 times. These are all valuation ratios which help us to understand how expensive this stock is or price of each share is when compared to earnings or operating cash flow or book value or net worth or sales or EBITDA and so on. And therefore we get a feel of how much multiples we are paying or how many times more we are paying against these different variables. So these are different ways of understanding where the price of the stock is. These are just the valuation ratios. Just because the valuation ratios would be low does not mean that we buy that company. We have to look at 
different metrics like profitability, return ratios, uh, debt ratios and so on to understand the overall health of the company. In terms of PG, we want it to be below 1.5 which then suggests that whatever multiple against the earnings that we paid, are we getting a high growth in that earnings. So for Asian Paints, we paid 53.8 times, but in the last five years, that earnings has been growing only at 12.1 times. And even in the last three years, the growth in the profits or earnings was 7.5%. So it's not as very high growth in earnings. So when we're paying a high multiple against the earnings, we also want a high growth in that earnings. So the PG allows us to measure at what ratio the price earning is justified. So we have to wait for it to fall at least below 1.5. Now since all of these companies are trading at a very high PE multiple and therefore we would hardly see any time the price earning multiple falling below 25. So we have to take a very calculated decision as to what price points we can buy into the company. So here the lower the better, it should not go into negative. Negative means that there's a degrowth in the profits. So even if you look at the last five years PEG values, we see the lowest value is of Kansai, which means that although we are paying 37.3 times against the earnings, we are getting a 16.3% growth rate from five years back. And therefore the PEG is lowest. Asian Paint PEGs is the next best at 4.4, followed by Berger at 4.6. In terms of three years PEG, we see that Kansai Narolek is not worth investing in at this particular point of time because in the last three years, the company has seen a degrowth in its profit of around 2.5%. So although we are paying 37 times higher multiple against the earnings of the company, we are not getting the growth. In fact, the profits are declining. So why would we want to pay such a high multiple for a company whose profits are declining from where they were three years back. Berger's profits over the last three years have been growing at 10.9% and thus the PEG works out to 6.2 followed by Asian Paints PEG of three years at 7.2. Checking out the sales growth over last five and three years, here we want the sales to be growing at the fastest pace which then signifies that the company's product has demand in the market and the company is managing to sell or grow its sales over the years. Sales over the last five years have been compounding at the rate of 9.6 for Asian Paints and in the recent three years it has further increased to around 10.7. So we want the recent three years sales growth to be much higher than the last five years growth rate thus signifying that the overall sales has increased at a much faster pace compared to the five years. Berger Paint is in a similar situation where the sales or revenue have been growing at 10.2% and in the recent three years at 12.8. Similar is the situation for Kansai where the last five years sales growth were 11.7 and in the recent three years it has further increased to 12.9%. Just like we saw the growth rate of profits over the five years, we also have to look at the operating cash flow growth rate. Asian Paints and Berger both are in positive growth rate of 9.5% compounded over last 5 years and Berger at 12.6%. Kensai Nerolak has seen a fall of almost 12.5% in its operating cash flows which means that whatever cash it earned 5 years back from there it has been dropping at the rate of 12.5% every year. Similar was the case in the profits of the last 3 years where we saw a slight degrowth. So we want both the profits and the operating cash flows of the five years to be growing at a healthy pace. Moving on, we'll look at the return ratios or profitability ratios. Asian Paints has given an ROE of around 24% and Berger at 21. Kansai Narolex return ratios were poor at around 13.4. Even if you look at the last five years average ROE, one year it can be high, but if the five years ROE values are poor, then we have to take note of that. In the last five years, Asian Paints averages around 27.2 and 25.5 for the three years. And the 2019's ROE has fallen below its averages. Similar is the case for Berger, where its recent 2019 return on equity has fallen below its averages of the five and three years. Kensai Narolex averages for the last five and three years were above my benchmark of 15%, although the recent 2019 ROE has fallen below both the averages as well as my benchmark. In terms of return on capital employed, 
highest abate on the total capital employed was given by Asian Paints at 35.1 percent in 2019, compared to last five years' average of almost 40 percent. Burger Paints has also managed to give about 25 percent of ROCE and very nearby to its five and three years' average. Kensa Nerolex ROCE values are good, better than the ROE. The ROCE stood at around 20.5, and the averages were also high, about 20 percent. Return on assets. Was again highest for Asian Paints, and that is why we see why Asian Paints has been given such a high premium or multiples for its market price. The ROA in the recent 12 months was 21.4 percent. That is on the total balance sheet size, how much profit the company was generating. Even if you look at the last five years average ROA, that also was at around 24.4 percent. Compare that with Berger and Kensai at. around long term average of around 17% return on total assets in terms of asset turnover that is against the assets employed by the company into the business how much was the sales asian paints sales were around 1.9 times higher than the assets so we want a more than one times multiple burger paints has done two times more sales than the assets employed into the business kensa nerolex sales were around 1.5 times higher In terms of inventory turnover, that is against the inventory holding of 2019 in the balance sheet, how much multiple was the sales? Asian Paints has managed the highest sales against the inventory holding. So this shows efficiency of the management in terms of keeping their inventory at the lowest possible level in the balance sheet and doing the highest amount of sales. Berger Paints has done around 5.4 times more sales than the inventory holding. Kensa Nerolex at 5.6 times, and their inventory turnover three years back is also at a similar level. Looking at the long-term data of profits and cash flows, as well as free cash flows, and then we'll look at the seven-year cash flow and free cash flow from operating activity. Asian Paints last five years profits in total were around 9,200 crores, way above Berger and Kensa Nerolex taken together. Berger Paints last 5 years total profit were around 1986 crores and Kensa Nerolex at 2148 when we look at the cash earned through operating activity Asian Paints cash from operating activity was slightly ahead of the profit declared Berger Paints 5 years cash flow was also higher than the profits Kensa Nerolex in the last 5 years has received less cash than what it is showing as profits in its profit and loss account so out of 2140 crores of profits declared the company has received only 1500 crores of cash and thus we need to look at the cash flow statement separately to understand why there is a gap between the profit and the cash earned since this video is about asian paints i am not going into detailed analysis of kensai nerolex cash flow statements free cash flow looks at how much cash the company has with it left after putting aside cash for buying off fixed assets so out of this 9286 crores received in cash over 5 years asian paints has 4836 crores left with it as free cash meaning the difference of 9286 minus 4836 crores was the value that was put into buying of fixed assets for the company i generally don't like the company investing more than 50% of its cash earned from operating activity to be put into purchase of assets here it seems the company has done well of keeping its free cash flow at around 50% level against the cash earned from operating activity over 5 years burger paints is also in a similar situation where its free cash flows are almost 50% of the cash from operating activity Kensai Nerolex free cash flows are less which signifies that the company has invested which signifies that the company has invested a substantial portion of its cash or earned over last 5 years into purchase of assets or fixed assets looking at further long term of 7 years data of cash earned Asian Paint has earned around 11875 crores of cash in this last 7 years from operating activity if you look at the cash flow from operations and the free cash flow will understand how much the company has invested over the last 7 years in purchase of fixed assets 
So out of this 11,800 crores, the company's free cash stood at 6,553, which means the balance of this too was used in purchase of fixed assets, which amounts to approximately around 5,000 crores. Berger Pins free cash flow over the last seven years was around 1,200. Slightly more than 50% was invested in purchase of assets over the seven years period. The lowest free cash flow of the last seven years was for Kansai and Narrow like at 256 crores. So the lower the free cash flow, the lower the company has funds to distribute in the financing activity. If you look at the last five years average profits, Asian Paint has been earning 1850 crores on an average every year. Berger Paints at 397 and Kansai at 430 crores. Asian Paints value in the market currently stands at around 146,000 crores. Berger Paints at 44,000 and Kansai Narrow like at 19,420 crores. But the better way of understanding is looking at the net worth. Where net worth would give a better sense as to what is the size of the company. Asian Paints net worth stood at around 10,000 crores. This is the shareholders contribution in the business. Berger Paints net worth is at 2,473 crores. Kansai Narrow like at 3,760. Contingent liability for all the three companies is low when compared to their net worth. It should not exceed by more than 20% of the net worth. All the three companies are almost debt free. Berger Paints debt stood at 0.2 and Kansai Narrow like at around 0.1. Thus the interest coverage that is the EBIT earned against the interest paid would be high for all the three companies since all these three companies don't have a major substantial finance cost on their PL account. Next, let us check the holding percentage of different entities in the company. The promoters of Asian Pains hold around 52.8%. Both Berger and Kansai Narolek promoters hold a substantial stake of almost 75%. And therefore, the institutional holding in both of these companies would not be more than 25%. Asian Pains promoters have pledged around 11% of their shareholding. It, this should not exceed 20% of the total promoter holding. The promoters of Berger and Kansai have not pledged any of their shareholding. Also, we have not seen any change in the promoter holding from last six months. In terms of institutional holding, foreigners hold around 17% in Asian pins and in Berger, they hold around 12%. Comparatively, in Kansai, they hold a very small portion of around 4%. DIIs in turn are holding a substantial portion of 12% in Kansai narrow lag compared to Berger where they are holding just 2.8%. In Asian Paints, DIIs are also holding a substantial stake of 9.8%. Mutual funds are holding around 4.5% in Asian Paints, 1% in Berger and in Kansai narrow lag around 7.8%. In terms of debtors to sales percentage, that is how much were the debtors against the sales of 2019 spending to be collected. The lower the better. Asian Paints had the lowest debtors to sales percentage of 9.8 followed by Berger at 10.4 and Kansai Narrow like at 14%. All of these are very low percentages and as I earlier mentioned should not exceed 30% of the sales. That is payment pending from the customers should not be more than 30% of the latest year's sales value. In terms of debtor days, Asian Paint is taking only 36 days to collect the payment from its customers, whereas Berger is taking around 40. The highest amount of days taken to collect payment from customers is by Kansai Narrow like at 51. The five years average operating profit margin was highest for Asian Paints at 18.5, followed by Kansai at 15.5 and Berger at 14.7%. If you look at the NPM margin of 2019, only Asian Paint has managed above 10% of NPM margin whereas Berger and Kansai both are slightly above 8%. If you take the long-term average NPM margin of 5 years, Asian Paint's average stood at around 11.3%. This is, this is the average margin earned every year. Berger Paint's is low and below my benchmark of 10%. Kansai has managed a long-term average NPM of about 10%. Dividend yield for all these three companies are below 1%. At the current market price, Kensa is giving the highest dividend yield of 0.9%. The current ratio that is the current assets against the current liabilities was in a comfortable position for all the three companies at above one times. 
If you look at the one year return, absolute gain in price was around 15.4%. Whereas from three years back, the average compounded return was around 10.4% for Asian pins. And from five years back, the prices have compounded at 14%. Earlier, when we analyzed the financial statement, where I was going through the three, five and seven years price variations, there we had seen that Asian pins had given more than 20% of compounded returns over three, five and seven years. That was from the ending of March of respective years of calculation. Whereas here we are taking exactly one year back, three year back and five year back price points. So there will be slight variation. But this gives us a, a good idea as to how the price has changed from exactly five years back and how the prices have compounded since then. Berger Paints has compounded the investors money at the fastest pace of 21% in the last three years and 25% in the last five years on compounded basis. From one year back, the prices have moved up quite substantially at 54%. Kensai Narolak has given a negative return of around 11% from where it was one year back and 4.3% negative return from three years back. So the prices have fallen at the rate of 4.3% from where it was three years back. From five years back, if you look, the price has compounded at 10.4%. So long term averages, all these three companies are compounding their shareholders wealth. Asian Paints current market price has to go up 25% to reach its 52 week highest point. Berger Paints price will have to move up almost 30%. Whereas Kansai Narolek will have to go up almost 60% to reach its 52 week highest point. In terms of recovery from its 52 week lowest point, uh, Asian Paints has recovered by around 18%. Berger Paints is up by 56% and Kensai Narolak is up by around 22%. In terms of balance sheet size, Asian Paints is the largest at around 16,400 crores. Berger Paints is 4,300 and Kensai Narolak is almost similar at 4,800 crores. In terms of debt position, Kensai Narolak has the lowest debt of 237 crores as of 2019. But when compared with the balance sheet, in terms of percentage, it will be high. Asian Paints debt is at 312 and the highest debt is of Berger Paints at 520 crores. In terms of where the debt was 3 years back, Asian Paints debt was 323 crores, Berger Paints at 354 and from there it has increased to 520. Kensai Nerolux debt was very less at 46 3 years back and that has increased substantially to 237 crores. In terms of fixed assets on the company's balance sheet, Asian Paints fixed assets are huge at 7,256 crores, followed by Berger Paints at 1,765 crores and Kansai Narolak at 2,300 crores. The highest cash holding in the balance sheet was of Asian Paints at 520 crores and Berger Paint at 238. Kansai Narolak's cash holding were 192 crores. All the three companies' capital work in progress was slightly above 170 crores in 2019. All of these values are of 2019. This concludes my peer group analysis of Asian Paints with Berger and Kansai Narolak. Next, let us analyze the technical chart of Asian Paints, Berger and Kansai also and look at its intrinsic value calculation. Looking at the technical chart of Asian Paints, I noticed that this company's prices have never crossed below 35 on RSI level since 2009. And therefore, to expect the company's prices to fall below 35 would be unreasonable in terms of technical chart in Asian Paints. The minimum low it made on RSI was 37.9 and 41.8 in December 2016. So even if you look at the latest RSI, that stands at around 42.4 and 48.3. So the next thing that I can do is buy based on the support and resistance lines which I have already drawn on the chart. My price to buy as it goes down would be 1525, 1433, 1342, 1207 and 1112 rupees. These are the levels that I can buy into. Along with this, I can also keep a fixed percentage gap of say 5 to 10% to keep buying 
every drop. Another thing I notice is that whenever the RSI lines have crossed below 50, each time it has crossed below 50, it has picked up again to go higher. So as of today, it is both the RSI lines are below 50 and thus gives us confidence that from here on even if it moves down or up regardless of that since the company's fundamentals are very good we can average out our buying in such a staggered manner that it keeps near to the current market price and thus whenever the price moves up that would be an opportunity for us. Till that time, either we accumulate or we wait patiently. Let us also check out Kansai Narolak and Berger Paints RSI levels. The current RSI values for Berger Paints is at 44 and 50.8. If I look at the support and resistance lines for Berger Paints, they stand at around 407, 358 and 334. So these are the levels that I would consider buying into if it does fall. Here also I have noticed that the relative strength index lines have never fallen below 35. Even during October 2008, the RSI lines didn't manage to go below 35. So if you look at the past data, we understand that we have to buy when both the lines fall below 50. And from there on, we don't buy everything at one go. We buy in multiple trenches at multiple price points in a systematic manner. Just because the company's fundamentals are very good does not mean that we can buy at a high valuation or at a high price. In that case, if we do buy at a high price, then the chances of our gaining in terms of price of share would be less compared to if we had bought it at a lower prices. Finally, let's check out Kansai Narolak. Kansai Narolak's current RSI stands at around 35.2 and 35.6 for both the lines. This too has not fallen below 35 yet, although one of the RSI lines had gone below 30 in March 2020, a few weeks back. Currently, it stands at around 35. I've drawn the support and resistance lines. They are at 386, 318 and 239. These are the levels that I would consider buying into if I'm interested in this particular company. The current RSI levels for Kansai has not fallen below 35 yet. So I would wait for the lower levels of 318 at least before I can start buying into the company. I am not recommending this as a price for others but this is the price that I would consider buying if I do decide into buying this particular company. Earlier in 2008 again when the financial crisis had happened the company's prices had given a double dip. This was a good opportunate time to accumulate this stock and from there on in the hindsight of course we can see that the prices have gone up quite considerably. So we have to be careful since the price has gone up so fast so quickly on the upside we have to be very cautious. The prices can move down very quickly in a similar fashion. So when you are buying a script which has gone up way too fast then at that time we have to buy at a big gap downwards for companies whose prices have gone up very quickly on the upside we have to be very cautious into how we buy these shares and at what price levels we buy there are great many chances that we will get stuck if we buy too high so the best option into buying a highly valued stock is to average it out over a different price points. I would even go out to say that we can divide it into 10 to 20 parts of whatever capital we have uh, and invest it gradually over different weeks or months to get the best prices possible. Anyways, uh, if we are investing in a company, it is with an horizon, it's with a viewpoint of at least holding for two, three years. So there is no harm investing over a one year period gradually even if the prices go up buy five percent up buy ten percent down or five percent down it doesn't matter we can spread out our money over a period of one year there is no hurry into deploying the capital at one go although this does involve a little bit more work but it's always better to invest safely gradually going down and up if the company is fundamentally good Next, let us look at the intrinsic price projection of Asian paints using sales 
profits, CFO, equity, balance sheet, growth rates over 5 and 3 years period. Based on the fundamental intrinsic price projections, I have 4 targets starting from 1948 rupees to the lower target of 1687. The current market price is 1570 rupees. The average of the 4 targets is around 1800 rupees. So I see a potential upside of 14.6% from the current market price and the maximum gain from the current market price is around 24%. So if the price reaches around 1948 rupees that would give us around 24% gain. This is the projection based on growth rates of profits, sales, cash flow from operations, balance sheet, equity over a period of 7, 5 and 3 years how these things have grown and this growth rate is projected over the price to come to these price targets. So this concludes my detailed analysis of Asian Paints. If you have any suggestions, questions or queries or doubts about the company or the video also, do let me know in the comment section. Also, I request you to check out the fundamental analysis playlist both in English and Hindi where recently I have done analysis of more than 26 companies. The link to that playlist is given in the description section. These videos will also help you to gain better knowledge as to how to analyze a company and make your own informed decision. If you like songs then visit Jizzle's channel. The link is also given in the description section. Having said that, thank you very much for spending your valuable time in watching these videos. Dhaniwad. Namaste. Thank you. Come